so the last uh, concept that we will uh, we will talk this week is called regularization. So regularization is an approach that to handle overfit. Okay, so to, to handle the overfit issues. So um, if you remember that <coughs> last week we talked about that. So when we have the data, we split the data into the training and also testing. Okay, so training and also testing. And we use training to get the model. And because the model is trained based on training data, so the accuracy on the training data will be very, very, normally it's pretty good. And however, we want to see that how the model will apply for the other data. So we, then we bring the testing data to the model and we compare the accuracy. So accuracy on the training and also accuracy on the testing. So if the accuracy on both training and also testing are the same, are, are the similar, so then that's great. So that means that uh, our model did great job on the training and also testing. So we can trust that we will be very confident that the model will doing good job uh, for the new data. Okay, so if we bring the new data to our uh, model, so it will be doing uh, a great job. However, if the model doing great job on the training, but doing terrible job on the testing, uh, so that is what we call it overfitting issue. So uh, in that case, if we want to apply the model to the new data, and we will have a very big question mark saying that, okay, so are we going to trust that result? So overfit is something that we tr we want to avoid. We also have another uh, problem that is called end fit. So end fit means that if the model doing a terrible job on the training data. Okay, so if that's the case, then you need to change a different model. Okay, just choose a different model. But uh, for the overfit issues, so that's where we have the regular uh, regularization. So that is this is designed to um, handle the overfit issue. Okay, uh, so basically, when we have more variables, more independent variables in our model, the model tend to overfit the training data. Okay, so when we have more variables into our model, remember that for the multilinear re regression models, R square will always increase when you have more variables. So uh, it is highly likely that when you bring a lot of variables into your model, it will overfit your training set. And also, when you have a lot of coefficient, especially non-zero coefficient, because you have more variables, it is also very hard to interpret the result. Okay, so for example, if you see price equals uh, alpha plus beta times area, okay, so then you can see, okay, so the price is how the price is determined by its area. So you can see just because when the area increase, the price will also increase. However, if you have a lot of other variables, and what you have to see is that, okay, so when everything else is keep equal, and when the area increase, and the price will also increase. So, so when you have multiple variables, you will, it tend to be that you will overfit your training set, and also you will have a more complicated model. So when you have more variables, the model will be more complicated, so the model will be also be hard to interpret. So the regularization is an approach that will add penalties to your model. So when you have more betas, when the beta becomes larger, so it will add penalties. Okay, so for example, uh, for example initially, the, the beta for the area is, okay, and let's say uh, 10,000. And when you apply uh, the regularization, so it will add penalties. 
and it will try to reduce the beta. So it will try to reduce the beta, change the beta to uh, 100 or, or 1000. OK, so that's the idea of the of the adding penalties. Adding those penalties or regularization will reduce the complexity of the model. OK, so it will reduce the complexity of the model uh, because the betas will be smaller, the betas will be smaller, or the beta even will become zero. So it will either re reduce the size of the betas, or it will all, or it will reduce the numbers number of the betas. Okay, and also it will also reduce the accuracy of the models, the performance of the models. So if you look at that on the chart, so uh, the blue lines indicate the R squares for the training data, and the red lines indicate R squares for the testing data. So we can see that without adding the penalty, we can see the R square on the training is very high. It's, it's almost 9.95, and R square on the testing data is, is not bad, but it's is 0.8 so we have this huge difference okay uh, so you may say okay so that is an overfit problem so now we can use we can bring this we can use this approach regularization approach so that means we are going to add penalties to our model so we will uh, we want smaller betas or we want uh, a fewer betas so you can see that when the penalty become bigger, the the performance on the training size will reduce. The performance on the training size will reduce. Normally, the performance on the testing will also reduce. Okay. But here we reach a point. So that is where that you can see the performance is something around. Uh, 0.78, which is a decent uh, accuracy, okay. And uh, however, that is a point that the performance on the training data is similar to the performance on the testing data, okay. So when we apply introduce penalties, we can reduce the performance on the training data and hopefully reduce less of the performance on the testing data so that we can find out a balance or a sweet point where the performance is okay and also performance on the training is similar to the performance on the testing okay and if we reach if we go over that penalty you can see the performance will reduce dramatically will reduce a lot um, so that is not what we want. Uh, so it's kind of underfitting, and this is the overfitting. So that is a sweet point that we are trying to reach. Okay, so that is the idea of the regularization. And for the linear regression models, uh, so this type of the model called the generalized linear model. So generalized linear regression models can in introduce the penalties to our betas. And specifically, we have Ridge and also Lasso. So those are two types of the generalized linear regression models. So those are the two ways we can generalize the models. So Ridge, or sometimes we call it L2. OK, remember that L2. So we all see the generalization a lot in, in our future models. The Ridge will add penalty to reduce the sum squares of the betas okay so the sum squares of the betas so it will increase the model in simplicity but decrease the performance okay so if you, you so you will not worry about collinearity and this is how the l2 look like or the ridge look like so so here we have four uh, betas so probably this one is the number of the bathroom, the, this is the number of the bedrooms, and this is lot size, and this is the area. Okay, and we can see that the coefficient 
uh, expected for the area. So let's just keep look at this one. So when we are using the linear regression models, you can see that the area, the beta is very high, is above 40,000. And if we're using a ridge model, so if we're using ridge and also if we choose a penalty, so in this case alpha to one, we can see the coefficient for the area is smaller. And if we choose the re alpha to be 10, and so we in increase the penalty, we can see that the coefficient is even smaller. And if we choose that the, the penalty to be 1,000, and we can see that the coefficient for the area is, is dropped uh, quickly, so it's almost to zero. Okay, so that is L2. And L1 is called lasso. Lasso will add penalties that are false coefficient of those less important ones to be zero. Okay, so it will force those less important coefficient to be zero. So it's, it's very useful for the future selections. So for example, if you have uh, 100 independent variables and you don't know that which one you want to choose, and you can use linear regression model and also generalize linear regression model, and you can apply choose L1 or lasso, and you can increase the penalty. And finally, you can see the, uh, the coefficient that are not zeros will be the important ones. Okay, and that is similar um, approach. So here we can see that when the lasso is one oh, for the linear regressions, we can see for the last coefficient, let's say, like, coefficient of areas is very high and we put a lasso to be 1000 you can see the coefficient has dropped a lot okay so we have two type of the uh, generalized linear regression models for the regularization so the first one is called ridge and the second one is called lasso okay the ridge is adding penalty to reduce the sum of squares of the betas lasso is adding penalty is adding penalty to false coefficient of less important features to be zero. Okay, um, reach, or sometimes we call it L2, is usually the first choice. So if you want to uh, reduce the complexity of your models, normally you choose L2 or the reach. Uh, Lasso will provide a model that is easier to understand. Okay, so less because it will give you less features. So less features. So it will provide uh, fewer features in your model. Okay, so that is the generalized linear regression models. Okay, so uh, we have not we have mentioned so many <laughs> models. We have the uh, simple linear regression models. Okay, and we have the multi-linear regression models and we also talk about regularization and also we have the generalized linear regression models which is a way to uh, add penalties to the multilinear regression models okay so we have now we have mentioned multiple types of the models and in the following weeks we are also starting start to introducing more and more models so here I just want to keep in mind remind you that all models are wrong. So none of those models is perfect. None of those models is perfect. So all models are wrong, but some models are useful. So some models can help us make predictions. Okay, so all models are wrong, but some are useful.